Hey, good optometry morning, Dr. Michael Nelson, your YouTube eye doctor here today, and today we are talking about the 10 most common questions I get about myopia management, and we are starting right now. All right, question number one, what is myopia and what do we mean by progression of myopia? So myopia is otherwise known as nearsightedness and basically it's a condition when people have trouble seeing things far away, but they can often see things pretty well up close. So myopia, it happens when the eyeball is basically a little bit larger than the average and the, the image is focused in front of the retina instead of on the surface of the retina. And if you're going to typically become myopic, you're often going to become myopic in your pre and early teens. And there's a typical progression that occurs in individuals that are not using forms of myopia management. For under the age of nine, it's not unusual that you might see a change of the, of the myopia by about a diopter each year. And then from about nine years old to 11 years old, you'll, you'll typically see about three quarters of a diopter change. And from the ages of 12 to 16, it's not unusual that you might see about a half diopter change each year. Question number two, can we stop or reverse myopia? And the answer to this is basically no on both accounts. As far as reversing myopia, we don't have any way that we can reverse myopia. The amount of myopia that you have is what you have, and we don't have any techniques that are designed to try to reverse that. And uh, as far as stopping myopia completely, we can't stop it completely, but we can definitely slow down the progression of myopia. In a lot of the myopia management techniques, you can reduce the progression of myopia by 50 to 60%. Now, the only caveat to this is a treatment called Ortho-K. Ortho-K basically using a, a rigid gas permeable contact lens to kind of reshape the cornea, and that can actually reduce your prescription. You know, our analogy of this is kind of like using orthodontics to reshape your teeth, but you wear a rigid gas permeable contact lens at night, and then in the morning you take it out, and your cornea is in a different shape that allows you to see clearly, which technically kind of uh, eliminates your prescription during the day, but it doesn't eliminate it permanently. So, all right, question number three, what age does myopia start and when does it stop progressing? So what we do know is that all of us are born actually farsighted or hyperopic. And so as we get a little bit older, that farsightedness or, or hyperopia disappears. And usually around the ages of five, six, seven uh, years old, we expect an individual to not really have any prescription at all. But sometimes that growth of the eyeball increases and kids will start to become myopic. And so while the normal development, we don't expect someone to develop myopia. Um, there, if someone is going to become myopic, it is often not, not unusual to see it develop around the ages of six, seven, eight, um, but can sometimes it could be a little bit later. Typically, as far as when it starts to slow down, you can have changes or increases of, of your myopia all throughout your life, but it's pretty common that you'll see most of those changes will stop by the late teens or early 20s. All right, question number four, why is the progression of myopia a health concern? So the reason why is because if your eyeball is getting longer, what it's doing, it's basically stretching all the internal structures and tissue of the eyeball. And that can put you at risk for eye diseases when you're older. And so increased myopia, in particular individuals that have high myopia, and our definition of high myopia is basically myopia over the, the, over the power of minus six. Individuals with high myopia as an adult will have a much higher risk of developing retinal detachments, cataracts, glaucoma, conditions like myopia, maculopathy. So all these conditions are increased if someone is highly myopic. And, and so if we can reduce that amount of myopia, then that can re also reduce the risk of those eye diseases when someone's an adult. And number five, when should I start myopia management? So the answer to that is, you should start myopia management as soon as you start seeing signs of myopia developing. Now that's pretty obvious when you, when you come in for an eye exam and the, you're having trouble seeing things far away. The eye doctor says, hey, there is some myopia here. I'm detecting a certain amount. There's maybe some options that we can identify to try to reduce the res risk of the progression. Now the interesting thing is sometimes we can see the start of myopia before you actually de start developing a prescription. So there's something called the axial length and that's the length of the eyeball. And we can start measuring the length of the eyeball and we can see how it compares to other kids in your same age group. And based on that, we can make a prediction of the likelihood of you becoming myopic as an adult. And so as a result, there are some kids that are not actually myopic yet, but you can see by the length of their eyeball that there's definitely a high risk for them to become myopic, and we might even want to start myopia management in those kids. So the answer is, as soon as you start seeing signs of myopia, either from a prescription point of view or from the axial length, that's when you should consider starting treatment. All right, question number six, what is Ortho-K and how does it manage my myopia? So Ortho-K is also known as orthokeratology. And basically what it is, it's using a rigid gas permeable contact lens 
that you wear at night and it reshapes the surface of the cornea that puts things in focus on the back of the retina. So our similar analogy for this is orthodontics for our teeth, but basically wearing this rigid gas permeable lens at night, then in the morning you take that lens out and it has reshaped your cornea into such a fashion that you can actually see things in the distance without, without glasses or contact lenses, and then the next night you put the contact lens and you wear that contact lens every night. And that can do two things for you. One is it can kind of correct your myopia or nearsightedness at least temporarily. Um, it's not a permanent correction so that you don't need glasses or contact lenses. But there is also studies that show that this will also help slow down the progression of myopia by about 50 to 60 percent. Question number eight, how do specialty lenses, these are glasses and contact, soft contact lenses, how do they help slow down the progression of myopia and myopia management? These lenses, and there's some spectacle lenses and then there are also contact lenses, these are we, we often refer to them as peripheral defocus lenses, and I've got a whole new, another video that you can uh, take a look up here talking about uh, a particular spectacle lens that has this technology in it. But basically the concept is, is that the eyeball itself, the back of the retina, it's actually curved, and uh, the standard lenses that we use for correcting myopia, they focus things on a flat plane. And so we're mainly focused on the area of the retina called the macula, which is your central vision. And so standard lenses put things in focus on the macula, but they don't put things in focus on the peripheral part of the cornea. And it's that defocus out on the peripheral part of the cornea that we think might be a stimulus for the myopia to, to increase. So these specialty lenses that are out there for myopia management, and they're available, like I said, in spectacle lenses and in soft contact lenses, they're designed to actually change where the focus is on the peripheral part of the lens. We're actually specifically thinking about where that focus is to try to reduce that stimulus for the eye to increase and grow longer. And so the technology in the peripheral part of these lenses um, is really high tech to, to do that feature to slow down the progression of myopia. All right, question number eight, what lifestyle changes can I make to slow down the progression of myopia? All right, so the development of myopia is thought to be a multifactorial um, event. And basically that means there's lots of different things that go into contributing whether you become myopic or not. Now, the number one factor we feel is genetics. And that one, unfortunately, we can't control at this point. But basically, if, you're, if you have the genetics that are, are designed that you're going to become myopic, then we can't really affect that. But we also know that there are other factors that we can control. And so environmental factors, there are a lot of studies that show that if you spend more time outdoors in the sunlight, that might help reduce you developing myopia in, in the first place. So um, preteens and, and young kids, what we want to do is we want to encourage them spending outdoor time. And then the second thing that you can do that's a lifestyle change to help reduce the progression of myopia is up close focusing. So we feel that focusing up close for long periods of time can contribute to becoming more nearsighted. And now sometimes screens get a lot of blame for this and there's a lot of talk about, okay, screen time is causing the increased amount of myopia, but it's not really the screens that are a bad thing, it's the amount of time that you're spending focusing up close. And the problem with screens are, is that they hold our attention for a lot longer. So you can look at your phone or your tablet and you can look at videos YouTube videos like this, I've got a bunch of them, watch our channel for hours and hours, and you can watch them for a lot longer than you'll read a book for. And that extended period of time of focusing up close can contribute to the increase of myopia. So my suggestion for my patients is make choices to view things further away. If you, if you are typically look at things on your phone or your tablet, make a choice to look at things on your laptop. If you typically work on your laptop, maybe choose to work on a desktop instead. Or if you're playing video games or watching online, Netflix or whatever, choose to do that on a television rather than on your computer. So make choices to do things further away. And we can't get rid of screens in our life, but maybe we can make choices to have, us, have ourselves focus things farther away. Question number nine, does wearing spectacle lenses cause my prescription to increase or make me more dependent on glasses? And the answer for this is no. All right, so there's a few studies out there that looked at individuals that were purposely undercorrected for the amount of myopia or didn't wear their myopic correction. And these are just with standard lenses. And what it showed is that those individuals that were purposely undercorrected for their myopia, they tended to increase faster than those individuals that wore their full myopic correction. So what we do know is that 
undercorrecting your prescription you is can cause an increase of your myopia correction so you definitely even if you're using standard lenses you want to use the full full correction and so then the other question is if I wear my glasses it seems like I'm more dependent on that and I often say that this is more uh, kind of a psychological thing where you have an interpretation of the blur so basically when you start wearing your glasses all the time you start seeing things clearly which is a good thing and then you go wait the world's clear. I didn't know what I was missing. And then when you take them off, it's like, oh man, this is super blurry. And you didn't kind of really know what you were missing before you started wearing glasses. So it's not unusual that people will have their glasses on and take them off and they feel it's more blurry, but it's just that they're not, they weren't used to seeing things clearly. And so wearing glasses or contact lenses doesn't make you more dependent on them. All right, question number 10, does combined treatments of myopia management have an additive effect in reducing the progression of myopia? So there are four main ways to reduce the progression of myopia. Um, there's spectacle lenses, there's soft contact lenses, there's uh, ortho K lenses, and there's atropine eye drops. Those are the four main treatments. And we know that there's a lot of studies on each individual one of, one of these treatments that slow down the progression of myopia, generally between 50 to 60% reduction in the progression. But the question is, what if we use more than one? Will that slow it down even more? And the answer is we don't fully know because there haven't been really any big studies that have done looking at these combined treatments. But because a lot of these have different mechanisms of action, we expect that there probably is some additive effect. So in a lot of my patients, particularly ones that are at high risk or it seem like they're progressing more than we would like them to, we are definitely choosing more than one option to treat the myopia that, at the same time. So, and so it's not unusual that I'll use spectacle lenses and atropine or soft contact lenses and atropine at the same time. And it seems like we're getting very effective results with those type of treatments. All right, so if you've learned a couple of new things here about myopia management, make sure you hit the like and the subscribe button down below. And if you wanna watch more videos like this about myopia management, I've got some videos up here on the sides and you can take a look at those and learn all you need to know about myopia management. And with that, have a great optometry day.